setting and or resetting a neck on a guitar is one of the most difficult things you'll ever do on working on instruments. Um, yeah, it, there's just so many variables and so many things that try to go wrong, if you will. Uh, and I say try to go wrong because everything seems like it's working against you on these things. I have this sitting just on my carpet here, and it just happens to be about the right angle for this thing. Um, when I put the, you know, the straight edge on here now, I'm clearing, keep in mind the saddle that's on here is a very, very low saddle. So I'm clearing that saddle by about less than a sixteenth of an inch, about a thirty-second. And that saddle's about that same high above the bridge, so that looks to me like that's just about the right angle right there. So, the only problem with that is I have to figure out a way to hold it there when I get it, you know, glued in place. Now at the moment, and I don't know what, how big of a gap there is on this side, there's a, almost between a sixteenth and a thirty-second on that side, and there's a little more on this side. Now that could be because the neck's not straight. I, you know, it's hard to tell all of that. Um, let me see if I can get the neck really what looks straight, and then check the angle one more time. Right there, that looks perfect. It really does on the angle. But let me see if the neck looks straight. It's really hard to say. About the best way you can do that is to kind of hold a straight edge on the those center dots and then look down the guitar and see if this is see if the back of this is on the center line of your guitar and that's about as good as it gets on this kind of thing you just fairly close but not perfect that looks fairly good now let's see if the height still looks okay it looks pretty good so what the reason I want that mocked up is and I just bumped it of course is that I can look at this gap and see how much gap there is the bottom is touching so for the most part what you have to do is reverse that gap in other words you've got to take off the bottom down here the same amount as of the gap that you see at the top and you have to make that a straight line from the bottom all the way to the top. I hope that makes sense to you. In other words, when you do that, then you'll, it'll slide straight forward and there'll be no gap. And then the angle would be perfect. Then, then your issue is putting shims on the inside to hold it there and to, to hold it tight. That's really what it amounts to. So... And, you know, there's all kinds of angle calculations and all kinds of things that people do. But to me, the straight ahead approach is just do it like this. And, uh, you know, it's, it should work. I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't. So, I've got an idea in my head about how big of a gap that is. It's a little hard to measure it. But for the most part, I've just got to take that much off the bottom up to nothing up here on both sides. Simple, right? Nothing to it. So here we go. What I think I'm going to try to do, and I don't know if I'm going to get be successful at this, is uh, I'm going to just see if I can't mark that slight angle here at least the first part of it just to kind of give me a ballpark it it this when you try to do something like this it just moves all the time it, it just constantly moves on you just like that that the let the uh, ruler just has to slide it cannot stay where you want it so I've made myself a little mark there that pretty much is the line I need to travel on, I'm pretty sure, to make this just about perfect. 
And again, it's all by eye and by feel and all of that. And there may be a better scientific way to do it, but that's how I do it. So now I have a couple of lines there that I can chisel to and it should work out. This sharp chisel shouldn't take too long to do it. One thing about this is you always want to cut in, like you never want to push out like that because you'll chip out the side of your neck. Never go out, you always want to be going in. Otherwise, you'll have problems. And if you don't think I'm telling you the truth, well, just try it or ask me how I know. And a whole lot of this is by eye. I'm seriously telling you, a whole lot of it is by eye. You just have to, you have to be able to see a straight line. And if you can't see that straight line, good luck cutting it. Almost got this side cut, but not quite. I got a little more up in here to bevel it out, but it's getting close. It don't take long if you got good sharp tools. And it helps if you've done this once or twice before. Then you can take your little straight edge and lay it on there and see where you've done well and where you haven't. It's almost flat. Got a little bit more to go right in here to taper it out. That last little bit of tapering is the hard part to do, really, and do it smooth and straight. Getting real close. I'm gonna do a lot more of that off camera and I'll show you what it looks like when I get to the next step. I have a web clamp around the guitar holding the neck down in there. This is also holding it to the top there. And then I can, it gives me a little more freedom to, to check the measurements. I'm using my in size taper gauge. Um, it's uh, number 4630-1E. In size is the brand. And I'm sliding that between the bridge and the end of my uh, straight edge here. And presently I'm getting about, well, let me just double check it here. I think if it depends on where I've got it. If I get it right dead center, it's a little bit more. I'm getting about 110,000, so a little less than that. But so it's a little high, it's a little bit steep. We've gone from below the edge here to about a hundred thousandths above, which is not what I wanted. I, I would have liked to have seen it about 60 thousandths or somewhere in there, 60, 70 thousandths. And that would be closer to, you know, one sixteenth of an inch. Uh, 62 and a half or something like that would be a sixteenth of an inch, I think. So it's a little high, not, not gonna lie to you, it's just a little bit concerning, concerning that it's that high. I don't think I want it that high. Uh, it's very difficult to do, I can tell you that for sure. So to get it to come back down a little bit more, then it really it needs to come off of the heel of the neck now, up, up, up toward the top a little bit more, you know. Um, on the other hand, I'm not getting as tight a joint as I thought I was getting, so that's kind of got me concerned, and that may be part of my problem. So it's a little more tweaking here and a little more tweaking there. I'm going to try to lay this down the center line and see if we're on the center line, just to make sure. That looks close enough that I think we're fine there. So that's not too bad. 
In case you're wondering what kind of a web clamp I'm using, I honestly don't know. We got this quite a, I bought it quite a while ago, and I never ever really used the thing, but this is really a very good application for it. And I'll show you a little more about this web clamp. It's, it's actually a pretty good tool. I'm going to unscrew it a little further. I didn't have it unscrewed far enough when I started this. Almost ran out of threads. So, you know, it's got... Uh, a little release on the side here that you can just pull the web up tight and then you, you then you wedge it back tight again and then you start turning the handle so let me just show you out of the mess here what this really looks like what I did was I glued some or actually just used two-way uh, tape and stuck some leather in there so that it when it goes up to the heel there it won't uh, mar the heel but that's what it amounts to. It's just a, a really neat clamp. Um, here's the name on it right there. So that if you want to Google it and look for it, that's what it is. I don't know what it cost. Actually, my two-way tape just let go of the leather there just now. But uh, I'll probably CA glue those on. I just did that temporarily because I just wanted it to, to, I didn't want this hard plastic against the neck there. But anyway, that's a, it's a pretty good use for, for that kind of clamp. It comes with these additional pieces that make a circle, and, and these go around corners of picture frames is what it amounts to. Um, it comes with, you know, three more of those pieces. So that's what it's really made for, is for uh, going around like a picture frame and clamping it tight. But uh, it works really good for something like this, too. Any, partic any odd shape, it would work great. Well, I'm, you know, I'm real close. I'm going to, off camera, I'm going to tweak on this joint a little bit more and then and try this same test one more time. Because I'd like to see this height right here at about uh, 62 and a half thousand, somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, anywhere from 60 to 70 thousandths, I think I'd be fine. But I, I'm a little bit leery of 110 thousandths. I think that's too high. I'd really like to tell you that that was going easy and everything's going perfect, but the truth is it's not quite doing that. It's uh, giving me a little bit of trouble. I'm still at about 110 or a little, even maybe a little more thousands back here. But I, it's really difficult to control with everything being loose. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put some shims in here. Uh, I'm going to put them on the back side of on this dovetail. That'll push against the inside of this dovetail and pull the guitar in tighter, which the neck in tighter rather. And that's what I need to be able to control it rather than trying to clamp it up and mock it up that way, I think. Because I, I've got to be able to just do subtle changes and make it work. And right now you can see the neck's pretty darn loose. So... It's shim time on the neck reset, and uh, yeah, I'm not even sure just how much of a shim I'm going to need. I'm, I'm going to need more, well, it's really hard to say. I can see a pretty big gap opening up whenever I lift it like that, so it's going to need quite a bit down at the bottom for sure. When I tilt it forward, I... I see a gap of maybe 75, 80 thousand, something like that. So I guess I'll start off with a couple of uh, 75 thousand shims and just stick them in there and s dry and see if they fit. See how that looks. Try it dry first. Yeah, I made me a couple of uh, mahogany shims there and Put them on each side of the dovetail, it dry, and you can see it goes in that far. Uh, so it's not going all the way in, of course, which is what you want. You want to carve it down tight. Um, and that is holding the joint very tight against the body here. Um, so that's looking pretty good. You know, you can do sort of a ballpark measurement at this point. It's not a very good measurement, but you can kind of do it. Uh, since this is in there tight now, I can, um, you know, I can set, I can look at the, 
the height off of the uh, top of the guitar and you know it's uh, and we'll call it uh, it's between one and a quarter and one and five sixteenths and then you then you can measure it up off the bridge and it's about one and a sixteenth so the difference there um, is approximately what you're talking about um, yeah it's so it's about uh, I don't know. It's still quite high above this is really what it boils down to. So I guess I'll go ahead and take this out and, and glue it up just like it is there. And glue, glue those pieces to this and then we'll start using my uh, hoe, uh, probably using the carbon paper method at, and sticking it in here and uh, testing this as we go and just carve a little bit off, a little bit off. It's going to be quite a long, tedious process, but it'll be a real tight joint when we're done. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can make the neck angle work out as we're doing it. Going to try. I'll show you the next step here. I've got it uh, pushed down in the guitar. I, you know, I glued up the, the wedges and then I just pushed it in here and it's still dry in the guitar. It, uh, it's only glued against the neck itself. I wiped off the extra glues to make sure it wouldn't stick inside the guitar. And then I also clamped the top up here where those two wedges are sticking up here. Um, anyway, the bottom line is I think that's about as good as it can be clamped up because it's such an odd shape. It's, it's difficult to clamp, so it's better to just stick it in the, in the slot there and let the slot itself be the clamp. I'm going to give that an hour or two to set up before I start carving. I've been working off camera fitting this neck and I've got the two little uh, shims, if you want to call them that, I guess, glued on the edges here. And I've been inserting them in here and uh, using the carbon paper technique to find the high spots. So here's just an example of that. You just, I slide the carbon paper in there and of course on camera it has to fold the opposite way because that makes it more difficult. And then you slide the neck down in here as carefully as you can. The paper generally slides in there and then you just kind of rock the joint, uh, you know, t forwards, backwards, any kind of direction you can get any kind of play. Squeeze it tightly together, pull it out, push it back in a little bit, squeeze it tight and then pull it out of there. Then you can see all the little black marks. Those are your high spots. And so we just carve those black spots away as carefully as we can, just shimming them off, you know, just just really taking thin cuts. Now, you could be more aggressive and get this done a lot faster, but if you just take your time with it and just cut it very lightly like I'm doing, when you're done, you'll have a crazy tight joint and uh, it won't have any play in it. And to be honest, a lot of times I think you could actually string the guitar up without any glue and it would be fine. But, um, you know, I wouldn't recommend that, but I think you could do it. So, because that's how tight the joint is. I just take a scraper and I take the, you know, the end of the chisel like this, use it like a scraper and, and just clean it off real clean. And then, then insert it again and start it again and see what, see if you've made any changes or progress. Um, when I was first starting this, it barely went in here very far. It would only go maybe a little over halfway. Now it's going about uh, a little over three-fourths of the way. It's, it's almost there now. We've got a, oh, I don't know, three-quarters of an inch to go, something like that. So it's, it's still quite a long ways from there. The other thing you can do while you're doing this is you can lay your straight edge on here and check your center line and make sure you're still going down the center of the guitar and I check that quite frequently and so far we're really good that way. Uh, another thing you can do is um, 
take your uh, straight edge, measure your height off of here, back here, like this. And right now, let's see, well, it, these work better when you turn them on. Uh, so yeah, that I can see it better now that I've turned it on. And any, <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll pull that up here. And it's right at 400 thousandths right there right now. Measure under here, because this is how much it's going to drop. And it's 339. So, you know, 60 thousandths roughly. It's, and so that's going to be just perfect. You know, it, so we're, the angle right at the moment is just absolutely perfect. So, you know, you can just bear, you, you know, it's just a ballpark estimate, but uh, that gets you pretty close. And uh, anyway, you just keep doing that. It, it's a long, tedious process to do it well. You, you can do it much faster, like I said, but if you really want the perfect fit, this is the way to do it. And you can see again, it's got its black marks. And each time you shave this, if you shave more on one side than the other, you can change the center of your, the center line, you know, the center line of your neck. So you, that's why you want to check the center line often to make sure you're carving it the right way and that everything's going to be just fine. Another thing you can do is round off these corners because the corners will uh, catch and keep things from going down in there too. So I do keep the corners kind of rounded off. And, and one last thing is you have to, up here where you're, where you're not inserted yet, you still have to kind of keep this flat up to that. Otherwise that'll catch and it won't go down in there any further. So it's, it's just a balancing act of all the different aspects of carving here. And you just have to kind of make it all work out. Okay, so now I'll scrape it again. My guess is it'll go in there quite a bit further this time. And I'll just try it dry first to see how much further it goes. Yeah, it went in quite a bit further, I think. Yeah, we're only a little over a half an inch from going now. For the record also, I every once in a while put the paper in backwards. In other words, make the mark on the inside of the slot. And you really need to do that because the inside, there's nobody says the inside of the slot's perfect either. I mean, it could have bumps and things and you just want to see where the high spots are there too and get rid of those. And so again, I, I do the same thing. This is the second or third time I've turned it around and there aren't a lot of high spots in there, but there are high spots. And so I just very lightly knock those out too. It's much harder carving on the inside than it is on the outside, that's for sure. But you know, you can take a flat blade like this and scrape also to try to clean it up. The uh, that was a scalpel blade. It's, it's a little too flimsy for a scraper. It works, but it's a little flimsy. The X-Acto knife uh, is much uh, more solid for scraping. They both look really smooth and flat right now, so see, I'm going to go dry now just to see how far I am from going in there. Um, yeah. Probably a hair less than a half of an inch. So let's just measure again and see if we can get a, a good ballpark measurement here. Now we'll just go ahead and measure to the uh, over the 253 it says and then uh, 190 is about what I'm getting here. So 253 and 190 the difference is what I shouldn't do math on camera so it's about 63 thousandths that's right perfect that's right at a six uh, sixteenth of an inch so we should you know we're really on scale for being perfect um, yeah 
let's see if it stays that way. Let's double check the uh, straightness down the, the body. I think it should be good. Looks pretty good. Um, if anything, it's um, maybe tilted that way a little bit. It just needs to, maybe it needs to cock this way just the lightest amount, which would mean um, I need to cut some off of this, this side a little bit more to let it go that way. But just a little tiny amount. I mean, the least little amount makes a huge difference. So I'm just peeling off the thinnest little hair off of this side to just keep the angle straight. Now we'll put it back in here and check it again. And you just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And you know, you can see we're getting much closer, but we're still a ways away. turn it around again and see where that high spot is because it's got there's got to be one in here somewhere almost got to be it should be approximately the same shape well not necessarily it could just be a bump and it slides past it I see a bump on this side I think that's where it's at Really looks pretty good in there overall. Once again, those corners down in there can really be where your problem is too. So you want to make sure the corners are opened up all the time down in the deepest parts because that'll stop it from going down in there. All right, let's turn it back around and do one more neck fit and then uh, I'll probably do the rest off camera, just keep doing it until I get it the way it needs to be. But let's see where we're at after this next neck fit here. What I'm noticing is there's a little bit more play at the very tip down here than there is up at the top. So it looks to me like we're needing to carve more at the top and you can See a pretty good one there that time. And not so much here, but there's some there. My guess is that the top I haven't worked on as much up here, so we just probably need to let the top come on in. The top's probably holding it up a little bit. Well, you can see the process. It's a long, tedious process. Um, you just keep doing that and doing it and over and over and over. And now you can see it's gotten much closer. Let's test the height one more time just to see how far we got to go yet. Okay, this time it turned on. It zeroed out and Actually, we're just about out of room here for check, checking this. Yeah, we're not... I'm about out of distance for checking it this, this time now because the angle of this up to that point there creates a little problem. So we're just about too low to check it this way now. So I really can't test it that way this time. So now it's more or less eyeballing it to say if I drop it that much, what's that going to look like back here? And it looks like it's still right on track to me. It really looks good by eye. Center line looks pretty near perfect. So I'd say we're real good. I'm going to go ahead and Keep tweaking it and show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Well, the very next iteration really dropped it down in there a lot. So we're really close now. So I'm taking my thickness gauge. 
um, my taper gauge. This is an in-size taper gauge, 4630-1E. I think I mentioned that earlier in the video. But in case those are in separate parts, now you know. And um, if I poke it in here now, I'm getting about 90 thousandths where it starts to touch, 90 thousandths. And if I do it here, I get about 100, eh, just about 150 thousandths. It's really close. So that would be about 60 thousandths difference, which is approximately a sixteenth of an inch. And that's just where I want to be. So, golly, small, small miracles. And so I think one or two more iterations of in and out here is going to fix this. I probably could force it in there now, but then you run the risk of busting this block. But I can tell you for sure, this is tight and there's no play in it at all. If you push that in there like that, look, I can lift the whole guitar up just by the neck. And you know, it's absolutely got no play in it at all. I'm pretty sure you could string this guitar up like this and it would play. Now, it's still not at the right height, of course, but my point is that joint is that tight. So we'll do another iteration or two off camera and I'll show you the final result. Well, I haven't stuck it in here this last iteration yet, but I'm pretty sure this is the last one. That's why I turned the camera back on. Um, the last time I put it in here, it was less than a 32nd of an inch of bottoming out. I cleaned it off one more time. I'm pretty sure it's going to bottom out this time. Um, and I can tell you the joint is so tight that I almost couldn't get it out the last time, and I'm afraid that's going to happen this time. So I'm going to pop it in here fairly tightly. and. I think that's I think that's it. Um, it's tight down here. There's no play there. So let's see where we ended up. I hope it ended up where I think it did. Wow, that looks real good so far. Let's see if it measures right. Measures right on. Well, it's a little tiny bit high, maybe. Um, might be just getting it clamped down. It measures at about 80, 85, somewhere in there. But I believe that's doable. That's only 20 thousandths of an inch from where I was shooting for. Um, I think we're good. At least it'll be uh, where we'll need a little bit taller saddle, and that's what we need, because this thing was way different. Um, it, you know, it, the angle was so much like this that you really needed to cut the bridge all the way down to the top. That's how bad it was. That's pretty darn good, and I can I guarantee you, you could grab this and shake it, and that guitar is not going to fall off out of there. I mean, it's that tight of a joint, and it's going to be hard to get it back out of there. Oh, it came out that time, not too bad. Um, this, uh, what I wanted to point out to you about this is if you'll notice, there's a shim on both sides now. Maybe you can see the shim if you look at the ends, uh, but there's a shim on both sides. And uh, they're, you know, pretty much really thin all the way down. So that my, my point of telling you that is when, when we took this apart, there was one little real thin shim on one side. And obviously that wasn't enough to make the joint tight because we didn't cut enough off of this joint on the inside here to matter. I mean, we barely took anything off of anything on the inside. We just mostly leveled it is all we really did. And, uh, you know, so it, it obviously has always needed uh, to be bigger. And um, anyway, it is now. It's just really is about as perfect as it gets. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to just put glue on here now. I'm, I'm going to double check my center line one more time. I'm pretty sure it's good, though. I'm just going to look at these dots, center that up, and then look down here. And it's, boy, it's dead center right between those holes. So it's perfect. Might as well just glue her up. There is nothing else to do. So let's get the glue on her. Um, there's a little bit of chip out right here, so I'm going to uh, lift this these splinters up uh, like this. Get glue under there. 
This, these little glue butt tips, I really like them because you can get glue under places like this. They're real thin, small tips, and you can really squeeze the glue into tight places very well. Any place the, glue, the uh, wood is chipped up like that, you can get glue under it. I think there might be a spot right here yet. Not really sure. Anyway, we'll, we'll paint glue all over everything real well. When I do these glue ups, I put glue over every surface that's going to make contact. Now you understand with, when you make a joint this tight, you don't want to put a ton of glue in there because it'll be, it'll be a hydraulic pressure to keep you from getting it down in there. So you want a real thin but solid coat. In other words, I want it coated perfectly all over everything, but I just want a very thin coat of glue. Okay, both parts have been 100% coated, and with any luck at all, we'll go right together, no problem. Perfect. Couldn't be much better, I don't think. This glue joint is so tight, I don't need any other clamps. I'm clamping this down, um, and quite truthfully, I pulled up on the neck a little bit as I clamped this down because it was just a hair higher than I wanted it back here. Um, it's really, really difficult to know for sure if it's gonna be perfect, but I think it's gonna be real close. Um, it was about 80, 85 without that little bit of additional torque that I put on it. Um, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. It's really hard to know. But I can tell you the joint is so tight, it doesn't even need a clamp. I, it, I forced it down in there, and uh, it's real good. All we can do now is wait, see how it turns out. It's been several days since I worked on the guitar. A uh, weekend happened in there and all that good stuff. And I am ready to route the slot deeper. Caleb had the slot deeper at one time, but then took the top of the uh, bridge down. So the slot is relatively shallow at the moment. I'm going to increase the depth quite a bit, about 70, 80 thousandths at least. And uh, I think it'll be fine. The, the bridge has enough thickness to do that, and it still won't be all the way through the bridge by quite a bit, actually. Um, so we'll be fine. It's just a, a, a difficult process. I've got the procs on here with the base uh, and set up here. And I'm going to, I've got it set already for the depth that's there, and I'm going to increase the depth by about 80 thousandths, something like that. And we'll cut another pass. So I'll do, I'll do the increase off camera here and figure out how I'm going to get this down. It's going to take some very tedious measurements to get this to, uh, to move the base in and the bit out, I guess you'd say. So I'm going to make sure I do a very accurate job on that because I don't want to go too deep and I definitely want to go deep enough. To give you an idea how I go about accurately setting that uh, bit deeper, I, I just take, like this hole's too wide to set the uh, calipers into. So I just lay this flat piece of steel across here. It's just a just a, people call them a scale because it's a ruler, but whatever. Anyway, I just lay this steel ruler across here flat. I measure it. Uh, these, these calipers have this slide here on the back, and you can measure your depth, and then you can just, you know, change your height of your table here and or your base, and then measure it again. And, uh, you know, you're measuring to the same point, so you can tell how much the bit has moved. So I set it for about 80 thousandths deeper. Actually, I'm a couple thousandths off of that, but it was close enough. So I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to uh, try to reroute this. Uh, wish me luck.
as you saw I went through there three or four times to really clean it out good and make sure it's good and flat that worked really well I think we're fine now let me just check the depth of the slot and we're at 160 thousandths that should be just fine Yeah, 160, 163 is what I got that time. So that's close enough. And just for general reference here, the thickness of the overall bridge is 225. So we're roughly 60 or so thousandths more before we would be all the way through, which is pretty thick. So we're, we're fine. We're thicker than that still, and uh, that's, that's plenty plenty thick for the material under the under the saddle. So we're fine. We should be real good. We'll move on to the next step which will be making the saddle. And there will be people asking me why I didn't use my fancy um, router base with my Dremel for this and I would have except over the weekend I noticed this thing had developed a problem here. I don't know what the problem is. This, this it's like it's like it's like this part shrunk and this part expanded and you know you think well you just over tightened it I don't recall over tightening it at all you know and I don't recall it ever slipping or anything it just I started using it up at the house the other day to route out some um, holes for uh, some hinges or something I can't remember now and I noticed this thing was flopping and I thought what is that flopping for so I reached up there to turn it and it was just loose and fell out so I don't know. I got to fix that. This side still seems to be okay. It's although I have to say it's a little, little loosey goosey too. So I have a feeling maybe the threads on the inside of this were just machined a little large, or cut a little large or something. But anyway, it's it almost works. It just doesn't. It doesn't grip anymore. You can see it just spins around. And like I said, I don't remember doing anything to uh, cause that. So. Anyway, we'll have to fix that. I love this base, but I will have to fix that before I can continue using it. Kind of jumped ahead there. I made the saddle, got it fitting pretty well, and uh, made sure that it went all the way to the bottom of the slot. Uh, that's a problem that uh, you really do find quite a bit on guitars, is that the saddle just doesn't fit the slot very well. And sometimes there, there's a little ledge inside there, and the saddle doesn't go all the way down. So the way I double check that is I check it with my calipers. I check the depth of the hole, I draw a line across the saddle, and then I check that line to see if it's the same depth. And if they match, you're good. And mine match, so it's, it's just fine. And now I'm just stringing it up, and the good news is we're in the realm of possibilities here. We're, you know, in places we're a little high, places we're just about right. Of course, once we get the tension on it, that will tell the whole tale. Uh, that could change everything, you never know. So, But right now, it's looking real promising. So I'll get it up to uh, pitch, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute, tell you all, all the gory details. Well, I got her up to pitch, and I'm testing the uh, action. I'm... I'm going to call this base side 120. I'm going to call the treble side about 140, I think. Which is nice because I can take the saddle down. I've got plenty of height on this saddle, so shouldn't be a problem at all. And uh, I'll get that done and I'll come back and show you what it sounds like. Well, my friends, Right on cue, my wife is riding the bobcat past the uh, window here as I turn on the camera. Um, anyway, I'm not going to try to convince anyone that this is the best finished job in the world, because it's not. But on the other hand, after taking it apart, after having it refinished, um, it's not too bad. You know, it. It's a, it's a beat up guitar that's got lots of cracks and things and the finish was never going to be perfect no matter what we did. But, uh, you know, 
you know, the clamps made a few little marks. I've kind of sanded those out, buffed them out the best I can. So I'm just kind of going through it by hand and cleaning up anything I see. And I'm, I'm putting several coats of the uh, Renaissance wax on it to try to hand rub it out. And that's working pretty well. It's a lot of work, a lot of elbow grease. Just trying to make it look as good as I can make it look without spending a whole lot more time and money on this thing. Because, you know, we've got, we've got a pretty good investment in it. And right now, I think it's, you know, based on the fact that I've kind of reworked the bill to, uh, you know, help the guy out because we, you know, didn't do the right thing the first time. As I mentioned, we probably should have just did a neck reset from the beginning and took it apart from the beginning. But, you know, I thought we could do it the other way. Anyway, bottom line is, for the way it all evolved, it's looking pretty decent. Um, what it looks to me like is a very well cared for, very old instrument. And it really doesn't look to me like it's been refinished. It looks to me like it's just been really re, uh, cared for, you know, and uh, it shows its age, it shows the cracks, it shows all the, you know, imperfections, but yet it looks pretty darn good. My friends, it was another tough fight, but we won in the long run. <laughs> this Carson J. Robinson guitar is back among the living. You know, I won't lie to you and tell you I always want more. The finish is pretty good, but it's not great, and I'm not going to try to tell you it is. It's just pretty good. Um, but it does look like a well cared for old instrument, and to be honest, it looks its age, which I think is a good thing, my, personally. I. If it looked like a brand new thing off the showroom floor, it just wouldn't be right, I wouldn't think, for a 1930-something guitar, you know. Not too bad a sound. You know, these old ladder brace guitars have their own sound. You know, they're not... Not my favorite, on the, I'll just be honest, but on the other hand, you know, for the kind of little guitar it is, plays pretty easy, sounds pretty good. Not bad. Um, the action on it, in case you're interested, is about 85 on the bass side at the 12th fret, and it's about, uh, about 90 on the uh, treble side, so it's a little tiny bit higher on the treble side. But when you think of five thousandths difference, think of the thickness of your hair, <laughs> that's the difference. I mean, it's like almost nothing. Came in from winning the big prize far away. And as I gazed out on that crowd, my old friends were cheering. And man, I sure felt proud. And of all the crazy roads to hold, well, I chose to ride the rodeo. To the top of the world And now They're calling me a star And they're asking my opinion Of how I got so far And I tell them Hold on tight You've got to ride them right Don't let them ever throw you down
Hope you enjoyed the look at this old Carson J. Robinson guitar. Thank you all for tuning in. And I really hope the customer is going to be happy with that. By the way, I never did really show you his father's pictures right in there as well. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Thanks. Thank you.